Ant-Man 3 hits cinemas, kicking off phase four. No, wait, sorry, phase five. And it's getting slammed at the moment. It's the second ever Marvel movie to come out the gate with a rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes in line with Eternals, but surely it can't be that bad, right? Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, or Ant-Man 3 for most of us, let's be real. Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, along with Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, explore the quantum realm, where they interact with strange creatures and embark on an adventure that goes beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. It's basically all the information that the trailers gave us, that and we're joined by Scott's daughter Cassie, played by Catherine Newton, who survived the blip and is now five years older. And also Kang the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors, a character we're teased with back in the season one of Loki, and is our main antagonist of the story. I've been trying to reflect on why this movie is being rated so low because I myself had a good time with it. It's not the best in the MCU by a long shot, but I think there's a lot in here that works really well. The highlight of the film worth talking about first is Jonathan Majors as Kang. This guy is incredible in this role. He brings so much gravity to his words in a way we've only seen with Josh Brolin as Thanos. Every scene he is in, he steals, and when you have him interacting with Paul Rudd or Michelle Pfeiffer, it produces some of the more interesting parts of the film. Speaking of which, I feel Paul Rudd does a great job here too. Granted, he's more limited in what he can do in this one, and I think that's due to the size of the story. Ant-Man has always been a, no pun intended, smaller superhero film. We are introduced to his character in a robbery story, and his goals are small and personal, his love for his daughter and protecting her. I think when you throw him into the chaos that is the quantum realm, his character gets washed out a little bit. This one's called Ant-Man. Man and the Wasp again, but that feels like it's just in title only. Evangeline Lilly, when we see her as the Wasp, is good to see, but is 100% thrown into the sidelines for an adventure between Scott Lang and Cassie. And it's the bulk of the movie and what has to work if you're to be completely sold on this. And unfortunately for me, it just didn't. Not to say it's because of the actress, but Cassie for me just isn't an interesting character and follows that writing plague all of these superhero films seem to be having these days, where they learn a similar superhero power to those before them, but nail it in a fraction of the time. It's a lose-lose really, because you can't spend a whole film on Cassie learning to be Ant-Man, but you also feel like it takes away from Scott Lang's achievements when she does everything he can do but learns quicker. Michelle Pfeiffer gets a couple of good moments here as well, but unfortunately Michael Douglas's role is nearly non-existent here, which is a shame as I think he was one of the strongest pieces in the original film. Modoc was teased in the trailer as well and I can see why people would hate his character here. I can't say I know much about this guy from the comics but I enjoyed the tie-in they did with him here, though I feel they leaned on that tie-in more than I wanted to see. I would have liked to see more Modoc and less the other thing I guess. There's also a bunch of side characters here as well which you meet in this new world and unfortunately I feel this was just what turned off most critics who watched this. It's that Marvel quippiness again, though I definitely do not think it's anywhere near as bad as Thor Love and Thunder. But also a large portion of the story is on these guys' problems, and you never really care for any of them. The designs of them are interesting enough though, and in fact I really enjoyed the world this story is set in as well. Yeah, it's very Fifth Element, Star Wars levels of intricacy and intrigue. It does make the film very CG dependent though, but for the most part that CG is very solid here. And then we're left to talk about the story, which does start off really strong. And I do think for 70% of this film, we have a really strong piece in front of us. But I think the last act really is the weakest part here. But again, it's everything Scott Lang and Kang that keeps this movie afloat and actually there's some interactions near the end between these two that I loved and whilst most will say that this feels like filler to serve as introduction to phase five they're not wrong but it's still more than that this is a solid movie on Kang and Scott Lang and something I hope is developed down the line in future MCU titles I went into this with fairly low expectations thanks to critic reviews I'd peeked at and I can say I still had a really good time with this still it's in no way as muddled in tone as people are making it sound like and we have a small handful of characters here that make the story worth watching and being invested into. Overall, I'd recommend this, and Jonathan Majors has proved he's going to be the one to keep an eye out for moving forward from here. But yeah, that's it from me here today, guys. Thanks a lot for listening. It's out in cinemas this weekend, so let me know if you've already seen it, and if so, what your thoughts are down in the comments below. If you liked this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and, and all that. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime, and video games. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye.